Hi, my name is Amandeep Singh and I'm a CPA practicing in the Metro Vancouver region of British Columbia, Canada. One of the most attractive tax breaks for you as a Canadian is the tax-free gain on your principal residence sale. In this video, I will give you a high-level view of this exemption. For a property to qualify as your principal residence, criteria must be satisfied under the Income Tax Act. Number one, you must own the capital property either alone or jointly or with someone else. You might ask what a capital property is. Let me explain with an example. You might hold on the house for a long time. Let's say for 20, 30 years, that would be a capital property. On the other hand, the property is not a capital property for someone who flips houses on a regular basis. Number two, the property must be a housing unit. And number three, you, your spouse or your kids must ordinarily inhabit the property. You might ask the meaning of ordinarily inhabited in the year. You see, it means you inhabited the housing unit ordinarily for some time in the year. The interesting part is that the rules do not say how much of the year. So the prevailing view that has been accepted by the CRA is that even if the place has been ordinarily inhabited for a small portion of the year by you or your spouse or your child, then it can be considered ordinarily inhabited in the year. For example, if you own a cottage, even if you don't live in your cottage every day of the year, you can still ordinarily inhabit it. Suppose you meet these conditions and you sell a home designated as your principal residence. In that case, you can claim the principal residence exemption or PRE in short form, which can provide you with a complete exemption from tax on the entire capital gains realized. We are all aware that almost every government level is trapped for funds and consequently it will need to look at how to find ways to recover funds handed out to so many Canadians. Well, many in need and some not so much. Suppose you've been following the news lately. In that case, it will come as no surprise that there have been many discussions around the possibility of a tax on Canadians' principal residence. In my personal opinion, the tax-free nature of a home is a sacred cow to most Canadians and the political risk in making your home taxable would be immense. But suppose Canada was to make changes to the principal residence exemption. In that case, you might ask, will the change be retroactive or will it be prospective? Well, you know, most tax changes are made on a prospective basis. Wait, you might ask, what retroactive is? You see, retroactive would be if you purchase the house in 1985, you sell it now in 2020. All of your gains from 1985 to 2020 will become taxable and you can imagine this type of change will be fundamentally unfair and will be very hard to implement. On the other hand, the prospective change would mean a tax only on the future capital gains. So what happens if you lose the principal residence exemption? If you sell your home and have to pay tax on any gain, you might have a problem buying a new home given the cost of acquisition, unless you downsize or move to a less expensive area. If you've been counting on the equity in your home to fund retirement and those tax rules change, the government will dramatically change your retirement picture. Some taxpayers who anticipate the tax on the sale of a principal residence are making plans to lock the principal residence exemption, which involve transferring the principal residence to a Canadian corporation. I do not recommend doing this. The primary reason is that a corporation's personal use property will result in taxable benefits applicable to the individual shareholders. Typically, the benefit equals the fair market rental value of the property net of any actual rent paid by the shareholders. Well, in some cases, the courts have even held the appropriate taxable benefit to be equal to the reasonable return on the number of funds invested in the property. This might be considerably higher than the market rental value. For example, if ABC company had paid $500,000 for the acquisition of a Vancouver, BC property, uh, it would typically receive a 16% rate of return on its invested capital. 
then likely 16% of 500,000, which is $80,000, would be appropriate amount to include in the shareholder's personal taxable income annually. If you did not know about the risks of personal use assets owned by a corporation, then you need to bear in mind that there are further issues. Firstly, to the extent that the funds need to be extracted from the corporations, such extraction will generally be considered a taxable dividend. Unless other tax-free accounts are available such as a shareholder loan or a capital dividend account in the company. Secondly, you run the risk of double taxation as there is no underlying step up in the cost base of the personal use corporately owned assets for the taxable benefit received by the shareholders in the year. Finally, when the property is sold, your company will realize a capital gain, assuming the property has increased in value, which may not be sheltered by any principal residence exemption. I generally recommend that business owners steer clear of their corporations owning personal use property because virtually in most cases, such a plan will come with significant taxable benefit consequences. So can you do anything about the anticipated increase in tax? Yes, you might want to do that, but you need to consult with your CPA who will do the math and help you make the right decision. For example, suppose you own multiple residential properties and you anticipate the inclusion rate on capital gains will increase. In that case, you might want to lock in the principal residence on one property versus the other. Since I am talking about principal residence exemption, I would like to remind you guys that the rules require you to report every sale of a principal residence on your tax return, whether you owe tax or not. Take a recent tax case, for example. A Montreal taxpayer who was hit with the gross negligence penalty for inappropriately claiming the principal residence exemption when he disposed of a condo. The taxpayer acknowledged that he did not report the unit sale on his 2013 return, alleging that it was a simple error attributable to a misinterpretation of the act. Now, according to the CRA, the unreported income constituted a false statement or omission made knowingly or in the circumstances amounting to gross negligence. Under the Income Tax Act, anyone who knowingly or in circumstances amounting to gross negligence makes a false statement or omission is liable to penalty. In upholding the penalty, the judge concluded that the taxpayer was an experienced business person who engaged in sophisticated real estate transactions. The taxpayer demonstrated willful ignorance and committed gross negligence in not declaring his income tax return the benefit that he had realized when disposing of the condo. And it also found that the taxpayer was negligent in not checking with his advisors about the conditions for applying for the principal residence exemption. Please also note that even if you have not sold your residence, in certain situation, you might be deemed to have sold the place. Uh, for example, if you change all or part of your home to or from a rental or business operation, you will be required to report the change in use to CRA just the same. If you have not been closely tracking the cost of all capital improvements, you make to your residence, you'll want to do this. Keep your receipts and invoices. These will increase the adjusted cost base of your property and could save you tax later if it turns out that you cannot fully shelter any gains on your property using the principal residence exemption. You see, your principal residence exemption can be a good source of wealth, especially if you use the principal residence exemption to pocket tax-free accrued gains. The onus is going to be on you to understand the complicated principal residence rules. I recommend that you talk to a CPA or a tax lawyer as your principal residence exemption might be at risk if you do not follow proper tax filing procedures. Thanks for watching this video and see you in my next video. Until then, bye.